Hi, I'm Shauna Lawhorn with the San Francisco League of Women Voters. I'm here to discuss Proposition H, a ballot measure which will be before the voters on Tuesday, June 5th. The San Francisco Police Commission is a civilian body that sets policy for the police department. In November 2017, the commission authorized the police department to use tasers starting December 2018. Tasers are weapons that discharge electrical currents into an individual. Automated external defibrillators are portable medical devices used following a heart attack. San Francisco police officers do not currently use tasers. About half of police department patrol vehicles have defibrillators. Any voter-approved policy on tasers cannot be changed by the commission or by the police department. Proposition H sets policy for when officers can use tasers. Tasers may be used when a person is actively resisting, assaulting, or exhibiting any action likely to result in serious bodily injury or death of another person, themselves, or a police officer. Proposition H would authorize the police department to purchase tasers for each police officer subject to the following conditions. The officer has successfully completed the department's use of force and threat assessment training, uses only police department issued tasers and holsters, holsters the taser on the side of his or her body opposite from the firearm, police department vehicles are equipped with defibrillators in districts where tasers are carried, and there is an investigation and report each time an officer uses a taser. This measure may be amended only by a majority of the voters of San Francisco or by an ordinance adopted by a vote of four-fifths of the Board of Supervisors. A yes vote means, if you vote yes, you want to set a policy for the use of tasers and authorize the purchase of tasers for each police officer by the police department, subject to specific conditions. A no vote means, if you vote no, you do not want to adopt this measure. I'm here with Tracy McRae from Yes on H and a proponent of Proposition H. Welcome. Thank you. We're also joined by John Crew from No on H, an, oppo an opponent of the measure. Thank you for having me. Thank you both for being here. We're going to start with opening statements and we're going to start with Tracy. Why do you believe this proposition is so important? So I'm a native of San Francisco. I was born and raised here. Uh, for the past 29 years, I've been a police officer here in the city and county of San Francisco. Currently, I work in the Bay. Bayview District, which has had a number of high-profile incidents, shootings, uh, assaults. As police officers, we need the best tools available for us to do our jobs, uh, to go home safely, to keep the public safe, and this ballot measure will do that. I know that people have oftentimes felt that um, tasers are inherently dangerous, um, we don't need them. We've been in a long, arduous fight trying to get tasers, even though when the DOJ collaborative reform recommended in their 272 recommendations that we have tasers, then people have always stated that, no, we shouldn't. And numerous police departments throughout the Bay Area have them. Thank you. John, why do you feel this proposition is so important? Well, I think the most important thing for people to take away is just the unbelievable scope of opposition to Prop H. Basically, everybody in town opposes it. So if you heard what Tracy said, if that was really that simple and true, you have to ask yourself, why are both pro-taser people and anti-taser people opposed to this? Why are the three major mayoral candidates opposed? Why are progressives and moderates? Why is the San Francisco Chronicle and the Bay Guardian? Why is law enforcement an activist? Because quite simply, it's not as simple as Tracy portrayed it. This ballot measure is not about tasers, yes or no. The police commission already approved tasers, and the POA went ahead and put this measure on the ballot. This is about when tasers are used, and more importantly, who gets to regulate them. This ballot measure is reckless and dangerous. It would strip the police chief and the commission from their ability to make any changes in the policy that was carefully created, no matter what happens. And I look forward to getting into greater detail. Well, that is going to lead us into our questions. And the first question goes to you, John. And it's, uh, what are the advantages or disadvantages to this proposition? Well, honestly, I don't see any advantage because even if you're pro-taser, uh, the policy has already been created through the process recommended by the Justice Department, the Obama Justice Department uh, uh, Cops Office. And just to slightly correct Tracy here, they didn't recommend tasers. They recommended that it be strongly considered 
and that a collaborative process be used to try to develop the, pro the, the policy. A collaborative process, which has been tried all over the country, and my background is from the ACLU working in police practices issues. I've worked with the Department of Justice, departments all over this country. You bring in stakeholders, you bring in the union, you bring in the, the community experts, you bring in medical people, and you craft the best policy possible. That is what happened. The police commission approved tasers in November, and they adopted a policy on March 14th that the mayor supports, that the police chief supports, and yet the POA is going forward with this measure because they do not like it, and they want to strip the commission and the chief from the ability to regulate it. There are two big differences between what Prop H would allow and what uh, the POA law would set into stone. One is Prop H would strip the requirement that officers try de-escalation before using force, especially important on a weapon as dangerous as tasers. And secondly, the police commission carefully looked at this and said, this is a dangerous weapon. We need to use it only when there is resistance. And they have proposed for this law and locking into place no physical danger whatsoever, merely bracing, merely verbally non-complying, and you can use this weapon. That's dangerous. Thank you. Tracy, same question to you. What are the advantages or disadvantages to this proposition? Well, I respectfully disagree with him about the language. So the language of this proposition, the way the police commission has it, has been very restrictive. So the more restrictive language, the less the officer will likely use this device. So we're getting into semantics about assaultive behavior, like he said, bracing. No, it's clearly spelled out in the POA's proposition for Prop H about the language and the training and the need to de-escalate and having proper training, the 40 hours of CIT, another 10 hours of, of uh, de-escalation practical exercises. So the training is there, having the medical equipment on site. It, it boggles my mind that the sheriff department has tasers and we never had this s sort of diversion about getting this piece of equipment. They took away the carotid restraint, which we never had a negative deployment of that uh, use of force. I've used the carotid restraint successfully numerous times, but then it was taken away. We were giving shields and long batons to use, but there was no training given to us about how to use those. So it was like, here you go. We took that away, but you can have a shield. Best of luck trying to use that. So. Our contention is, is that the language is too restrictive. If they want to, down the road, uh, revisit language, the police commission can do that. So. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next question will go back to you, Tracy. Uh, should voters be making decisions about police weaponry? The voters are part of the community. Like he said, stakeholders. The community is a stakeholder. They should have a say in this. I'm a citizen of San Francisco. You know, I vote. Uh, so why not have a say in what we do? The police commission, uh, now two commissioners are leaving the police commission board. So when are we ever going to get to meet and confer about this topic? So it's incredible that it's taken this long, eight years that we've been talking about this, when other departments have this. The, the sheriff's department, their uh, taser policy is four pages long. You have Oakland that has this, San Jose that has this, but all of a sudden San Francisco, if we're a world-class city, we should be equipping our, equipping our officers with the proper tools necessary to do their jobs, to keep them safe, to keep the citizens safe, to keep the people who visit here safe. John, same question to you. Uh, should the vote, voters be the ones deciding about police weaponry, making decisions about police weaponry? They certainly shouldn't be locking into law a standard that cannot be changed. I need to uh, uh, correct what my friend here from the POA said. It's clear in the language of this law that it cannot be changed. The police commission will have no power, the chief will have no power to change anything that is inconsistent with what is being proposed here. That is what is so dangerous and radical. It is unprecedented, never been tried in this city, and I'm not aware of a single police union in the country that has tried something like this to take away from regulators the ability to actually make necessary adjustments based on experience with the weapon or dangers or what the manufacturer changes and best practices. So this is an unbelievably radical measure. And with respect to the particular standard, it's right here in black and white. The terms that the POA chose to use were active resistance, which is defined, it's a police term of art, it's defined in SFPD policy as bracing. 
as tensing, as running away or verbally signaling an intention not to comply. That is a very low standard for using a weapon as dangerous as this. And if we want to see if that, if we want to make a looser standard over time, why not start with the more restrictive policy, the more restrictive standard on a weapon that has been this controversial? Again, tasers have already been approved. This isn't about whether or not you get tasers. That's already been decided. That is not the issue on the ballot. Thank you. Closing statements. We'll start with you, Tracy. Well, I just like to say it's been a long process trying to equip our officers in this city with tasers. Uh, we still feel the policy put forward by the police commission is too restrictive in its language. Um, voting yes for this proposition will ensure that officers do their annual training, complete de-escalation. They will be required to have accountability which we do right now for any use of force that we do. As a sergeant, I fill out a form, a very long form, to do that. And then also that, you know, we'll have the medical equipment, defibrillators on board if we do use this tool. Um, Prop H, I believe, is the correct policy. Um, people have the choice to vote, yes or no. Obviously, we got enough signatures to get it on the ballot. So obviously, people want this, this tool, this device for us to use. If that wasn't the case, then we wouldn't have been able to put it on the ballot. Thank you. Your closing statement, John. This is John. a deeply cynical uh, measure. With a deeply cynical argument we just heard, the POA has put $180,000 into this campaign already. They spent $141,000 on a paid signature gathering campaign to mislead voters about what this is about. They told voters with radio ads that this was about whether or not they had tasers, when in fact the police commissioner had already approved it. This is why this particular program, the League of Win Women Voters and SFGov TV, are, is so important. Voters need to be informed on this issue. We strongly encourage you to read the voter guide. There's more information available at our website, votenoprophnationbuilder.com, votenoprophnationbuilder.com. Don't be fooled. Look at the endorsements, get the facts, and you will vote no, like most of the, uh, the people who have looked at it carefully have already decided. Thank you. Thank you both for your time. We hope this discussion has been informative. For more information about this and other ballot measures in the June election, please visit the Department of Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall starting on May 7th from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, June 5th. Thank you.